Welcome to VU Parent Live. We are so excited that you all are tuning in with us tonight. My name is Blair, and I have the incredible privilege of being the VU Kids Director here at VU. I'm so grateful that myself and our incredible team get to partner with you each and every week to help develop your future world changers. And we're so grateful for you parents. Thanks for tuning in tonight and being a part of this special night where we get to talk parenting and we get to give tools and give resources. And we hope that tonight really encourages your hearts. And we hope that you come out of tonight knowing that you've got an incredible community that surrounds you every step of the way. But we've got an amazing panel up here and we're going to introduce them in just a moment because I cannot wait for them to share with you. But before we do, we always wanna let you know what's going on in VU Kids. And maybe you're tuning in tonight and you don't know what VU Kids is all about. Maybe you haven't been able to attend VU Church yet because we've been out of having in-person services for a while. Well, VU Kids is our kids ministry of VU Church. And we've got so many different fun age groups. We've got our dreamers, which is our little babies, our six months to 24 months. We've got our heroes, really our two to four-year-olds. They're in there having a blast right now, each and every week. And our legends, we've got our five years to 11-year-olds. And we've also got a VU Buddies program, an inclusion ministry with children with special needs. We have so many different team leading these incredible ministries that are a part of our church. We're so grateful that so many of you have your kids a part of either VU Kids Online or VU Kids In Person because we just launched VU Kids In Person recently back. We're back at Silver Spot Theater where we're having really watch parties each and every week where families are getting to come and their kids are going, getting to check in and be a part of VU Kids again, and then getting to watch service live with our community. But this past week, we had an incredible Jungle Island experience. And we rented out Jungle Island and we had an in-person service. And we're gonna show you a little recap cap of that in just a moment. But really what's going on in VU Kids is that we've got VU Kids online. We've got Zoom crews going on. We've got lessons that the incredible kids team is filming each and every week for your VU kids. We've got online written lessons. We've got so many online tools and resources for your family. So that if you don't feel comfortable yet with bringing your kids, that's okay. We want you to know that that is okay. But we wanna provide resources and tools for your kids to continue learning about the love of Jesus. But if you do feel comfortable and you're ready to bring your kids and be back in person and have our team sharing the love of Jesus in person. We have experiences and opportunities for you to be a part. So we've got Silver Spot on Sundays. It's a watch party for you to be a part of. You can drop off your kids and feel comfortable knowing that we've got a safe environment for them with an incredible team. But then we've got Jungle Island in-person experiences happening. We're gonna continue letting you guys know when those are going to happen. But for a little bit more about what's going on at Jungle Island, why don't you check out this video? Amazing. I love that recap video. And I'm so grateful that you guys are trusting us with your VU kids during this time. Our incredible team is really passionate about the future world changers, about your VU kids. So passionate about raising up these leaders to be passionately in love with Jesus. That's our mission at VU kids. And that's our mission, whether we're online or whether we're in person, we want you guys to know that whatever experience your VU kid has, that they're gonna be taught the love of Jesus each and every time, through every kid's crew, through every lesson, through every connection moment, 
every opportunity we get, we're going to share the love of Jesus in any way that we can. And at VU, we say that Jesus is our message and people are our heart. And people are VU kids. We know that they're the next generation of leaders, that they're gonna, going to be leading the way of VU Church in the future. So we wanna continue to pour into them. And we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to do that online and at Jungle Island. And we'll keep you posted on when we're going to get to experience Jungle Island again, because we cannot wait to be with you all again. But I've got an incredible panel up here with me today, and I'm excited to jump into our conversation. We've got an amazing group of three people up here. We've got an amazing woman named Janelle, who helps lead our VU College program, and Tiago, who's an incredible dad and artist in our community, Nicole, who is an amazing mom and really a leader in our community in counseling teenagers, women in our community, and really has a lot of experience with kids. But instead of me really introducing them today, I thought it would be special. We've done this again last, uh, last month. We got to gather and be a part of this, and it was really special to get to have a conversation. But it, I'm really excited about today, and I think it's going to be amazing having you guys talk. But I wanted you to introduce yourselves today and just share a little bit about what you do and just a fun story. Awesome. Thank you, Blair. Well, like Blair said, my name is Janelle. I have really the privilege and honor of overseeing VU College of Ministry alongside with John David Robertson. And VU College is really a ministry of VU Church. We're kind of like the VU kids. We're here to really equip and empower the next generation of leaders, you know. So we do that through a variety of different programs. We now offer three different programs. We offer our degree-seeking program where we partner with Southeast University, which uh, they're a Christian private school in Lakeland, Florida. So students will come to VU College and they, they can earn their associates, their bachelors, or now their graduate degree. Um, we have a leadership program for those who may be a little bit older but still want to receive those hands-on ministerial experience. We offer that for them as well. And then our summer 10-week internship, which we call the VU internship because we just have to have VU in front of everything. It makes it sound so much yeah. better. So we have the VU internship and um, it's really been my honor and privilege. I've been a part of the team for about two years now and I've been loving every moment of it. But as I was thinking about a funny story, it has to be about our VU college students. And we have acquired... Um, apartments and so students have the chance to live relatively close to our side about two minutes away and within the apartments there is a community cat that kind of walks around and this cat became pregnant and so our students decided to throw a cat a baby shower and it was a i'm talking a full-on baby shower they had decorations they had party games they had party favors they had a speaking moment to honor the cat it was I watched, they, they sent me a 14 minute video and I was like guys it's it's 9 o'clock at night what are you doing right now and they have a full it's like hey honor is our calling this is what we do we're going to honor this cat and I just absolutely love our college students they make every moment hilarious man that was funny I love that uh, I, I'm just honored to be here in this panel I think sitting down with you guys my name is Tiago I'm a visual artist uh, in South Florida I've been doing that for a while I think like since kid, I think I had that freedom uh, since kid. I think uh, my family always gave me the freedom to just adventure myself in, uh, in art. But uh, memories that I, you know, like I think it's funny what's happening now with my kids, you know, because I can do that with them right now. I uh, have uh, two young boys, a four and a two-year-old boy, and I give them freedom pretty much all the time. Stephanie will be mad at me right now because I'm sharing this. But actually, when I have my moment with my boys, I give them completely freedom. And I think memories are just one that was like beginning of this year. I think uh, Zion was like, uh, he was able to find a permanent marker box that I use for my stuff. Uh, and here we go. Zion was just painting the whole room, living room, my bedroom. And I think I remember like, getting a little upset because I was like, this is permanent marker. Like, we're going to have to repaint the whole house. But uh, as soon as like, I went to, to Zion, I said, Zion, uh, what do you do? Like, what's going on? Like, kind of talking to him, two years old, but having a conversation. And he's like, Daddy, this is Daddy. And he kept pointing, kind of saying, because I have paintings at home. So he's like, that's you. And I'm trying, you know, yeah. connecting art with you. And yeah. you do that. I can do that, too. Yeah. So I couldn't get mad, you know, and then I don't, it's just like, all right, Zion, you're good. I'll, I'll deal with Stephanie, you know, with <laughs> my wife, but that's it. That's, that's awesome, Tiago. I'm so happy that you shared that. I love laughing. 
Um, so my name is Nicole Bueno, and I am a mental health counselor. But before that, I am also a mom of a seven-month-old. I had my baby during quarantine, which was an experience, but it is the most beautiful experience ever, having my first child. Um, so I help teenage girls and women through anxiety and depression. I help them overcome those challenges, those stressful thoughts and situations that unfortunately right now just seem more heightened than usual, yeah. right? Um, but I have to share my funny story with my seven-month-old. So he's currently teething right now, and there is this teething toy that you add a fruit inside the teething toy. So I'm at a banana that's his favorite fruit, and he's on his high chair, and I see him looking to his right, and I also have a dog. He's looking to his right, and he's pointing down, and I'm like, what are you doing with your teether? And I look over, and my dog is having some of his banana. So he was sharing his banana and then oh, taking yeah. it towards, and I was like, no, 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 no. So that is my funny story with my seven-month-old baby. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. I love these stories. <laughs> a cat a throwing a shower for a cat, having Zion draw on the wall. <laughs> Your little boy sharing his teether toy with a puppy. Yes. These are amazing. <laughs> so many fun parenting stories and just stories about working with students in VU College. And I'm really grateful that you guys are up here tonight being a part of what's going on here in our VU families. And VU Parent Live is really all about resourcing you and giving you tools as parents to continue moving forward in strength, to continue moving forward knowing that you are the right parent for the job. We say this all the time. We want to make sure that you know that we are for you 100%. And so that's why we take the opportunity to encourage and to hopefully share some tools with you tonight so that you can leave tonight, whether you're on YouTube tuning in or you're tuning in later, that you can leave and know that you've got this, that you've got this, whether you're a single mom, whether you're, you've lost your job this year, whether you are a couple and you're struggling in your marriage, whether you're um, a mom or dad and you're parenting your kids at home during this time when having online school, whatever season of life that you are in right now, we want you to know that you've got this and we wanna to continue to encourage you and give you tools. But I'm excited about our conversation tonight. We're just gonna kick it off with some questions and hopefully as Tiago, Nicole and Janelle answer these questions that you are encouraged and filled up and that you walk out of tonight knowing that not just Tiago, Nicole, and Janelle, myself are for you, but that you've got an entire VU community that loves you, that supports you, that's cheering you on, that's behind you 100%. But Janelle, she introduced herself a moment ago. She's got a master's in higher education. She leads our VU College program. And right now, in the world that we're living in of 2020, we're in a pandemic education is kind of all over the place um, right now. We're experiencing it through Zoom, in-person, um, shutdowns even in classrooms right now um, at certain moments when kids have to go back to learning online and then go back to in school and back to online. But as someone who has a master's in higher education, how can you encourage families right now and really speak to education right now in this moment of 2020? Yeah. Um like Blair said, education this season has looked so different. And before I even answer the question, I just want to say thank you to the parents and great job because this season has completely flipped our entire schedule and routine on its head. And you, you guys had to step in and create curriculums and programs and your kids being home all day and making things work. And so you all have uh, been incredible. And I think just if you haven't heard it enough, you're smashing it, you're doing incredible with where you are, but I think we can all agree that education is important, right? Um, whether it's uh, formally, whether it's informal, whether you're, in, you're teaching your kids from pre-K, um, elementary school, middle school, high school, all the way through college, or um, informally in the way that they pick things up from being around the house or when they're with their group of friends, you know, it's it's how you obtain it. It's, it, it does really matter, but what we do kind of grin is that it's an important thing, you know, and I think when it comes to education, like we said, it's looked different. Here at VU College, um, when everything happened, our kids were going on spring break. I, I'll call them kids. They're students. They're, they're 18, 19. But 
they were going on spring break. And so when the pandemic happened, they had to stay home and we had to transition from a live in-person um, college to virtual in a week. We had to make the flip and then they finished out their last six weeks online, you know, so it really took a lot of pivoting. But I want to encourage you all that you're already doing an incredible job. But I think a way um, for us to really continue to promote education is we have to look at where we are, right? So I read on Google um, that the first couple of years of your, your child's life is really their formative years, right? So you really want to make an impact during those times. What are different things that you can do? What are different creative things that um, you can put in place to help your child to um, really encourage your child to continue learning to want to learn, you know, and I, w- I would just say approach with a positive attitude. I know you're, you're probably working from home, your kids are in the background, you're doing different things, but you still want to create a moment where you're teaching them, where you're engaging them, and when you're, um, when you're encouraging them to learn and to think differently. So I would just say approach with a positive attitude. Um, look at every moment as an opportunity to teach them um, for them to get crit- um, to really engage in critical thinking, um, buy them books, uh, buy them different games. I know a lot of companies now are coming out with these toys that are, they're not just for fun moments, but they have some type of educational factor to it, right? So maybe you're t- you, you have a young child at home, you want to teach them different things, how to count, ABCs, whatever the case is, buy a toy or a game that's catered towards that. When I was in middle school, we had this website. I don't know if it's still active. I think it was called math for you I hate math. I, I, <laughs> I was never a big fan of it, but I re- recognize the importance of it. So I would log on to this website and I would play a game that taught me how to graph, how to do different things. So while I'm having fun with this game, I'm actually learning things that I can then apply to the classroom. You know? So there are different fun games that you can look up different websites. Don't be afraid of um, changing the way that you're doing things. You know, I think the cool thing about this next generation coming up is they're, they're being born in their extremely technology savvy you know they're going to learn how to do things know how to use computers and ipads and way before we we figure those things out and so use those things i don't think learning has to look like what it's looked like um in the past and i think 2020 has taught us that right maybe we're not in the books anymore we're not focused on flipping pages or turning papers maybe we're scrolling on our ipad that's okay you know like use that to your use that to your advantage i think a lot sometimes a lot of parents are afraid of keeping um their kids on the technology and i i, I think everything is good in moderation but you can use that to your advantage. You know, what are they most engaged in? You take that and use it to your advantage. Maybe you need to take them outside um, in a safe way, but you're, you're doing kind of like an on-site experimental type of learning. You're taking them to the park. You're taking them to the zoo. You're showing them different animals. Hey, how are we going to learn about the animals today? You're taking them to the zoo. You're showing them this different kind of animal, you know? You're taking them to uh, maybe a park. And you're, you're learning about different leaves and different science things. There's different ways that you can engage learning. You it doesn't have to look like what it's always looked like. And I think you all are already doing an incredible job of mixing it up. But I just want to encourage you to, one, keep a positive attitude as we're still figuring this thing out. Um, but two change it up. It can be different ways. We can definitely do things outside of the box now. I think the cool thing about our church is we've had to change and pivot as how things go. You know, the, the mission is still the same, to bring people who are far from God closer to God, but the method how we've done it has definitely changed. I think we can apply that to learning. The mission of our education is still the same, right? We want to encourage the students to learn, to grow, to think critically, to, to graduate, but the method how we can get accomplished can look completely different. And so, yeah, keep a positive attitude and don't be afraid to incorporate different factors in different ways that you can um, teach your child. It's great, Janelle. It's really encouraging. Um, for me, I love what you said. I think that clicked right at the end so clearly as parents that our mission is its the same. We want to continue to make sure our kids are learning and growing and that they're enjoying their experience, but really our methods are changing and that's okay that they're changing. We say that at VU as an organization. I think that's, that applies so well to education right now, that yes, our mission is the same, but our methods may, ch- may change. And that this is a moment where we can be flexible. And it might, sometimes it hurts to be flexible um, and to remain flexible because you have to remain flexible day to day. But I think that's an encouragement for us as parents right now, whatever season that we're facing, I know many of us are having to remain flexible. Maybe it's not even with education, but maybe it's in a different area and you're having to remain flexible in your life right now. The mission of your life is the same, but the methods can change and we can remain flexible and keep our eyes on Jesus. I love that, it's amazing. And Tiago, is here tonight and he is an incredible dad. He shared a funny story about his kids just a minute ago, but he's an artist and he works many different hours a week. And sometimes he even shuts himself away in studios and works for long periods of time to get ready for different projects and 
for different experiences to allow the community to see his artwork. And I know you have a different schedule and many parents are facing that right now. Maybe they've lost their job and they're now working two jobs and they're having different schedules and maybe they're a stay-at-home parent and they're having to now be a homeschool teacher and they never thought they would have to do that. So many people facing new season of life you as a dad, maybe you could speak to that a little bit. How have you been intentional in those moments of just um, finding a rhythm of work and being with your kids and being intentional in those moments? Definitely. I, it's basically uh, when everything happens, I'm going to talk about like, you know, this whole setup that we're facing now, the time, the scheduling. I, I remember like the, my uh, Kai is the oldest one. I had like a very hectic schedule and it was like a learning lesson to me. I think what I learned from Kai as the oldest one was just like I gave it too much time to my work, right? Uh, and I couldn't uh, fast adapt to a new schedule of like a new kid. Yeah. And I think like uh, with the second one, gave me a second opportunity, right? A second chance to be like, you know what? I'm going to change things around. Let me, let me try to figure out a way that I can be more intentional with my boys now. And I think like when you're present, you're present. You know, I think that being helping me a lot. Like we, you know what, if they up, you know, early, so I'm going to use the time that they're most valuable there. Like they up early, so let's do something in the morning. So my schedule is going to shift. Instead of me coming, going early to work, I'm going to late to work. I stay later at work or sometimes trying to get my schedule, but actually, actually like they're feeding my schedule, but also I'm more intention with them. It giving completely time to them. When I'm with my boys, it's pretty much like, it's you guys' time now, so let's do everything possible we can. And I think like, uh, in, in, it's been helping me a lot. It's just kind of like, you know, like, of course, with the whole parking situation, like parks and not being, you know, shut down and stuff. So we're trying to be very creative at home. So we, we do our park at home. We're doing the castles at home. We do the backyard. We try to use the max of the backyard is or your apartment, whatever it is. We're trying to be creative. I'm trying to be creative with them and their time that they have in there. Um, when it's their nap time, you know, the oldest one doesn't nap no more, but youngest... <laughs> You know, like it would be schooling system for them. So we do like a little school activities with Kaya. So he's more focused in that and Zion sleeping. So you know what? That's my time. I can answer back taxes. I can figure out work and things like that or email. And I'm going to, you know, big, uh, I'm going to give a big shout out to, to the moms, man. Like, you know, like I'm a dad. I understand. But like moms is a different level. Like Steph, you're the best mom ever, even though all moms are great. But it is, is, is a great and like a, a scene. I've been learning a lot from staff because I think like me as a dad, I have a, we are a team. We are a team that we're going to tag, you know, tag this and just do the best that we can to provide the intentionality with the boys, the time, their time. And they're, it, it, it's just being helping me doing that, you know, working my schedule, but towards when they have more the energy. So I give all to them when I'm at home, when I'm with them. So that helps a lot. That's great. I love that, Tiago. I think that, some, some of us have those flexible schedules where we're able to do that. And some of us might not, but I love what he's saying is that in this time, in this year of 2020, there's a lot of different changes going on in our world, but that they bring the fun moments to them. Those fun moments aren't stuck at the park or at the zoo or at these different places that might not be accessible at the moment, that you can bring those fun moments into your home and create fun memories and be intentional in every moment with loving on your kids, creating fun moments in the house, whether it's in the morning when they're waking up, like Tiago said, he said, that is such a special time for their kids. They're waking up, they're ready to see their dad. They're ready to see their mom and to be with you guys, with Steph and Tiago. So you're saying, okay, I, this is my time. I'm making sure I'm intentional with this moment. No matter how tired I may be from the late night of work, I'm getting up and I'm using this moment to be intentional and to have creative moments. I love that. So good. Nicole, you are here tonight with us and I'm so grateful. You are a counselor really for, you talked about it earlier, for girls, for teenagers, and also for women. And we know that right now in this year, we're facing so many challenging things. People have experienced loss. They're experiencing unknown seasons. They're going through a lot of difficulty. As a counselor, what are some things that you encur are encouraging these teenagers, these kids, these women um, during this time? What are some of your biggest tools and encouragement during this time? 
Yes. Um, so the first tool that I love to use with them is really empathy. It's more finding of what their pain points are and just really getting to know them. So no two kid, no two parent, not, not, no one is alike. And finding those quirks and really getting to know what are their favorite things that they like and they enjoy in life, right? So I really, really take the time to get to know this individual because everyone is so special and we have our own talents and we have so many great gifts to share with people. And even though we are struggling through hard times, we still have that in us. So it's really digging down and trying to find what those things are to shine, to bring them out a little bit more and to let you know that you're not alone. We all go through something like this at some point and it's okay to also feel sad. So it's giving that balance and making sure to give you the strength to feel that you can do this and you can struggle, right? It's hard, it's hard. And the other, my favorite tool, is laughter. I love bringing in laughter. It's one of those things where you always, always find time to shine when you're in moments of laughter. Even right away, you notice the change in the kids or even the parents' face, right? It lights up. It makes you feel special. You think of your favorite memory. It's all these fun factors that bring out and you start seeing the fun things that they enjoy. And so shining that thing, shining both the empathy, really, really digging down on what they love, what they love to do, and what they're going through, through their perspective. So not on my agenda, right? And just as parents, sometimes we also have to take the time to see what is your child actually going through right now? How can I see things through their perspective and not through my agenda, right? So it's really, really empathy. And then bring in the fun. It's okay to be sad and still laugh and go out your way to find things that make you laugh. So good, Nicole. It's really, really encouraging. I love those tools. I love that she was sharing that we can have empathy and we can let our kids know that it's okay to be sad. We know that you're facing many different things. You're not able to see your friends right now at moments. You're not able to be maybe in the kids at times. You're not able to see some family members that you really love at times. So it's okay to be sad, but you can dig down and, and find what they're enjoying right now. See the world through their perspective. I love that. Take a moment, picture the world through their perspective, whether they're two years old, whether they're 15 years old. Take a moment, picture the world through their perspective and see how you can continue to love on them and bring the gifts out of them and bring laughter into your home. I love that. I love that she said, you can laugh even when you're sad. Take, you can take a moment, even if you're facing a difficult day, to create a moment of fun in your home and have some laughter. I love that. I love, love, love that. That was so good. I hope that that encouraged you guys um, to just take a moment to jump into your kids' shoes and, and look through their lens and see how they're seeing the world around them. And we're talking a lot about 2020 because it's been a year like no other year that we have ever experienced really in our lives. And maybe it hasn't been a difficult year for you, but I know many people, of you know people that in your lives that it's been really difficult for. And we've seen a lot happen in 2020. And Janelle, you lead an incredible crew, um, a Be A Bridge crew. And this is a crew really focused on racial unity. Maybe talk for a minute to us as families on how we can continue that conversation at home, how we can continue to be a bridge in our schools, in our families, and through kids, wherever we may be, how we can continue to be a bridge. Yeah, we've, this season as a church, we've started the Be The Bridge Cruise, and they're really focused on racial reconciliation. And um, I think in 2020, um, well, not even just 2020, we can all agree that these conversations have been happening. You know, the issue of uh, race, um, the education behind it has been happening for a long time. But in 2020 specifically, uh, I think it's definitely been highlighted a bit more in recent times. You know, it's been because of all the things that's been happening, the climate of our country has changed and how we're doing things and how things feel. And so I love that as an organization, we've been able to have these conversations and create spaces for those things to take place. And 
in terms of like how we can how parents you guys can continue the having the conversation it's it's a difficult conversation to have you know it's it's awkward it's uncomfortable but in those conversations are perfect moments for for growth for for learning for vulnerability to be to have these open moments with your kids with your family with your spouse whoever um, and i think as you if you have a young child i would just encourage you to create moments of exposure it's so important as a young child that they grow up seeing these things, understanding um, the differences, to talk about race. I remember I had experience in 2016, I was at a um, summer internship at a university and I went to, I made a friend and I went to her family's barbecue and I was the only person of color there, which was fine. It was a great time. I loved the family. It was a great experience. They were incredible. Um, but I met this little boy, I think he was about five years old or so, and he had never seen a person of color before. And so when he looked at me, he was so shocked. He actually thought I was, um, he's like, is, are you okay? Is everything, is, is, are, you, are you fine? And he was so cute and I was asking, you know, he, he had, but he had never seen a person of color before. And I thought, oh man, he's five years old here. He's, he could have had this opportunity to, to be exposed to, um, to different moments, to different people, different ethnic groups. And I think as parents, if we want to try um, introducing these conversations to our kids at a young age, you know, we can look at the things that we're buying them, what kind of books we're purchasing for them, you know, who are the authors behind these books, what, what's the storytelling of these books, what kind of games or toys are we buying for these kids or, or, or dolls or whatever the case is. We can watch certain shows, we can um, watch certain movies, have movie night with your family and then have a discussion behind it after, like, hey, how do you feel um, if your kids are in online school and maybe this has come up, hey, how... how what did you guys talk about today? How did this, um, what was the conversation behind it? I know I've bought a lot of books during these times because not only am I waiting for, um, to learn about this in school, but I'm trying to teach myself as well. So maybe you can have these conversations with your kids. Um, if you have, you have an older kid, encourage them to, to go online. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this time. We have um, used technology so much, but there's so much that we can learn, so many websites that we can visit. Um, and all we gotta do is just type in a Google search, like, hey Google, how can I XXX, how can I learn more about about so, so, and so, in it. but it does take a little bit of intentionality for us to search for the answers. I just encourage um, one, create moments of exposure to the conversation itself, um, to different kinds of people. I love having conversations with my different groups of friends because it opens up my perspective. I, just, I don't just want to have the same conversations. And as you're raising your kids, you want them to be able to be exposed to different conversations. It gives them a, really a, a broader sense of the world around them. Um, and so exposing your, kids, exposing your kids to these different kinds of moments, conversations, opportunities, moments for learning and growth, but bringing those things into your home as well, bringing the conversation into your home, it's all about a conversation at first, right? There's action steps that definitely can be taken, but start having the conversation, like, and it's, it may be uncomfortable at first, but encourage your kids, like, have the uncomfortable conversation. It's okay, you're, you're with family members. This is a moment to be uncomfortable, so to, to stutter a little bit, to, to process your thoughts, to, hey, I don't, I, I'm not entirely sure, or, or I don't know what to think about this, and that's okay. You can. You don't have to have your thoughts well put together. You're in front of your family. Relax. Have a conversation. Like, hey, mom. Hey, dad. Like, hey, son. Hey, daughter. What do you think about this? How you're. How do you feel about this? Um, and I know our, our definitely our Vu Kids team have been doing an incredible job with videos and things. Um, encouraging the conversations and centered around the Bible as well. Like have these conversations with them, recap the, the lessons and things that they've been reviewing. Um, and I think just bringing those conversations into your home can be a great way for you to continue promoting the conversation and continue to keep the conversation alive um, as we um, finish out 2020, go into 2021 and so on and so forth. Just keep the conversation alive in your home. It's great, Janelle. I like that. Keep the conversation alive in your home. I think that's really special. I think for me, as a girl who grew up in Louisiana and who moved to Miami when I was 20 years old, honestly, I don't think I had really ever even been around people who are from another country. Like, it's it depends on where you grow up. But I love that you're talking about in your home. You can already teach your kids about everybody. And at VU, we talk about that people are a heart. And so it's not just people that look like us and act like us. We love everyone. They're a part of our community and they're equal. We're all equal in God's eyes. And so I think as parents, sometimes we can get so focused on our kids. I know it's an easy thing to do that they might even think that they're the only kid in the world, you know, that they're rolling around like, oh, but as parents, I think it's so important that we continue to expose them, like Janelle's saying, to the world around them. Not it, Whether you're living in Miami, you might not be living in Miami. You might have a totally different experience and your kids might have an experience like what Janelle was talking about at the barbecue, just because of the, the city that you live in. 
Well, as a family, you can continue to bring those conversations into your home and to bring education, as Janelle's sharing, um, as she has her master's in education, she's sharing really great tools that you can bring these conversations in and let them know that there's so many other people that live in this country around the world that have different experiences, that live different lives, but that we're all loved by God and that we're all seen by God, whether it's through books, whether it's through conversations, whether it's through using the internet, like Janelle sharing, so, so good. I love each and every little point that you shared because I think it's so helpful from this education standpoint of how we can bring that into our homes. Really helpful. Nicole, we're talking a lot really right now about being a bridge. And as a counselor, you have to be a bridge oftentimes a lot. Um, You're talking through different situations, trying to um, help them see you know, what's the next step? What do, what do I need to do from here? Really in 2020, um, right now, we're talking about technology, so many different things. Kids are exposed to a lot right now. They're exposed to a lot, whether it's through technology, whether it's through just um, communities that they're a part of. There's seems like, at least through technology, that kids are exposed way more than when we, maybe we were kids. Right now, how would you say that as parents, we can be a bridge of trust, how we can create security in our home? Yes, that's a really good question. Um, I'm going to say that you would have to set the intention to listen non-judgmentally to your children and with an open heart. So it's really hearing them out and just listening. A lot of times when people are talking or, or even our children, regardless if they're playing, we're quick to what's the next step? What else do we have on our agenda? What do I say to that comment? So instead of um, jumping in, just taking that time to set the intention, I am just going to listen and really just hear what your child is saying, even as they're playing. It doesn't matter the age. So if they're playing with their dolls, if you just watch and listen and really take that opportunity to see what's really going on in their head, it really takes the time to be mindful and think, okay, I'm just going to listen and have an open heart to whatever they have to say. So a lot of times it may not be what you wanna hear, And that's the part where we are the adults. And as a parent, you have to say, I'm going to take this opportunity and just listen. And start with a small question. If you feel that this is going to be a challenge and it does take practice, start with a small question. How was your day today? And just listen. And then go from there. And little, little by little, you'll start practicing the habit of how can I really tune into my child to build that trust with them. So just as they have to build trust with us as parents, we have to gain their trust as well. And what better age than the little ones? So then as a teenager, they feel confident and start going to you versus towards the internet and towards their friends. And a lot of the friends right now have older siblings. So they're really hearing a lot of older things that they should be listening to. So you should also ask, hey, What's Johnny's little brother, older brother talking about? Really kind of be very curious and play with what the questions are coming and really just taking a step back and just listening. Again, you may not hear, you may not hear what you want to hear and that's okay, but set the intention and tell yourself for this question only, for this response, I'm just going to listen with no judgment. It's really good, Nicole. Um, I like it that you just said, start with a simple question. How was your day? And just take a moment to listen without having to respond or jump in when you hear something that you might not like, but taking a moment to listen to your kids to see their perspective. I think um, as a counselor in this perspective, it's really helpful for us to hear your tools because as parents, I think that helps us take a step back and to actually see where our kids are at rather than jumping in all the time and trying to um, correct every moment that we can, we can actually see, okay, let's actually see where they're at so then we can make decisions um, based off of really where they're at, not based off of our feelings in the moment, but where are they at so that we can continue to lead them as a parent and continue to guide them. 
And so I love that. I, I love the, that simple, just how is your day? Take a moment to listen and then ask simple questions that you can see. Be curious and then that will build a bridge as your curiosity questions grow and you take a moment to listen, that builds trust with your kids. So you take a moment to listen and really hear where they're at. I think that's an encouraging tool for us today. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Tiago, you are a creative. And so I can't wait to hear what you're gonna share, but I really want to know a little bit about really finding your passion at a young age. I'm sure you found your passion at a young age, but now as parents, how can we continue to allow our kids to be creative, to find their passions? Maybe it's not art, but maybe it's something else. How can we create space in our homes to allow our kids to do that? Uh, I grew up pretty much like having, you know, like the, the situation that I can do pretty much what I had the passion about. And I think art was just developed really quick, very young age. But I, I suffer uh, in a situation that I was, uh, had to learn discipline first, but not the art first. So I thought like that is kind of like took me a different route on schooling, on the setup of a schooling system uh, that I kind of like I got disconnected from the major stuff that I needed, right? Because the only thing I want to do is art, but I went, I think the pressure of like trying to like my mom make me perfect or no, you need to do this, you need to do that. So uh, I try to do the opposite now. I think the first tool that I use is called freedom. Okay, freedom uh, especially at such a young age, they don't know the, the, the uh, they learning everything. They, they getting every, like for the first time, they touching something. They getting exposed to like a color that I never saw before. So I think like um, me as a, as a dad, I give them freedom. I apply freedom as the first tool. And to them, it will be the main thing. And sometimes I put like a long paper on the, on the floor and choose different type of medium kind of as far as uh, we talk about watercolor here or, you know, pen t tempera color, organic paint. I think now it's easy to find also, too, it's so easy to find different tools that will help you to, uh, to develop that to your kids. It's so easy, like, you can do now, you know, organic paint. I, my time was nothing organic, <laughs> right? But now you can find organic paint that the kids can even touch their face. If they want to paint themselves, they can do it now. So I think, like, that's what I, I developed uh, early age on, on my boys is bas basically give them freedom. I put canvas on the floor, let them feel it, the crayons, let them feel the paint, let them feel them even a flower we talked about earlier, but let them feel everything. And I think that will help them to understand the direction they want to take. So perfect example, like the oldest one is more into like very detailing stuff. He's very like particular, like he, sometimes I even, you know, don't, don't, don't go hard on them, you know, like, and I think Kai's on himself. He's like, he's a type of character. He's like, I want to do the perfect line. I want to do the perfect thing. That's his style. So you know what? I'll buy books now that goes towards more detailing, cartooning, and things like that. He'll be like, oh, I like to do small lines. Now, Zion, of course, too. So he is freedom and is abstract, right? So develop the abstract on him. And he likes to do those very broad, like, strokes, but you give them the freedom, you give them the space, you give them those, that tool, and don't be hard on the kid. Like, don't be hard on your kid because they're not doing the perfect line. They're not, and also, too, I stop comparing my kids to other kids. I think the comparison sometimes, you, you, you kind of like, um, you put them in a box because it's, they wire differently. They're different. They're like unique. They're one masterpiece. God made them like unique. And I think uh, you adventure in that, their style, what they like, the colors they prefer. It's not because he's not liking so-and-so colors. So I think, like, don't be hard on a kid. I think that's what I like to say all the time. And me as an artist, I feel like he could have do better than heart or he could have do better than life. But I'm not going to be that dad. I, I, just, I just choose to say, you know what? He'll get there. But you give the freedom them to develop that in their own. And the choices. Because maybe sometimes they're not going to be artists. You know, there is... They all creatives. We all creatives. We all made to create. So because that, let them create their own story. And maybe they'll go through like different setup. But like uh, the first two I say is give them freedom to your kid to adventure as much as they can in a young age. That's great. 
Great. It's really good, Tiago. I think um, that's an encouragement, encouragement for us to really create fun moments in our home, first and foremost, because we have the opportunity as parents not to put our kids in a box, like Tiago saying, that maybe we do have a picture in our mind of where we want our kids to go, and we can continue to guide them and show them steps to take to love Jesus and to love people, but we also can give them the freedom to say, hey, actually, you can do whatever you want in life. You can be whoever you want in life. Here's the freedom to, ch- to choose what you feel like God has given you, the gifts that God has given you. At a young age, Tiago sharing that his two-year-old and four-year-old, that they're different and that's okay that they're different, that they're not just different from each other, but they're different from all the kids that they hang out with, all the kids around the world, that they are a masterpiece. He said that they're a masterpiece created by God, each and every kid, and that's so true. And so giving them opportunities, creating opportunities for them to live outside the box, to, to figure out what, they, what, God, what the gifts God has placed in their heart at a young age, where they don't have to figure it out when they're maybe in their 20s or 30s, but they can begin to figure out what they're good at, what they love, what, how they can reach people. Because Tiago sharing all this and Tiago reaches people with the love of Jesus through his art. That's a huge way that he's able to love on the community around him and beyond through the love of Jesus. And so each and every one of our kids get that opportunity and we can guide them in that way to make sure that we're saying, okay, yes, we are going to love Jesus first and foremost. And that's a non-negotiable in our home, but we're giving you the freedom to find your passion, to find what you love. And we're gonna put Jesus first, we're gonna love people, and we're gonna continue to figure out what our gifts are, what God's calling us to, so that we can give Him all the glory in our home each and every day. So, so good. Thank you guys for sharing all of those tools. And we've talked through some different questions tonight and really, shared so many different things from different perspectives, whether it's education, creative, mental health counselor, so many different perspectives. But I'd love to know just if you could share anything with these parents tonight. It has been a crazy year, like we said. (laughs) And Tiago, Nicole, your parents, Janelle, you're gonna be a parent one day, but you're pretty much a parent to all the VU College students already. You are already a parent, but if you could share anything to these parents tuning in tonight, what would you say? Yeah, I think we hear it time and time again that 2020 has been a crazy year, a year like no other. Our kids are going to probably be reading about this year sometime in school, right? And so my encouragement to you would just have grace for yourself. None of us have ever been here before and we're a few months, depending on where you are right now, but we, we've been going through this for a few months now, you know, and so it's it's difficult still. It's still very new and we've never been here before. We're all still learning, all still growing and just um, have grace for yourself. You're doing the best that you can with where you are and it's it's right for where you are. You understand? Don't don't put pressure on yourself to, oh, I have to be here, I have to do this or I have to create this. You're, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, doing exactly what you need to be doing for where you are right now. I believe that we've all been equipped in this season. I think we're all um, called in this season and I think you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, exactly what you're being equipped to do. And so continue to have grace for yourself. Every situation looks a little different. Um, every moment looks a little different. Every day looks a little different. We just f- finished a collection of talks day by day because we literally are going day by day, you know, and so, so continue to do that. Go day by day. And it's not a bad thing. I think over time it's had a, a bad connotation like, oh, hey, are you, had you figured this out yet? No, I'm just going day by day. And it may come off as, oh, I'm being lazy or whatever the case is. But really you're just it, today I'm going to fully trust God. I'm going to I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to focus on today, and then tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing again, day by day. And soon you know, we're, we're going to get to the other side of this. Um, but this season right here is not a wasted season. We're figuring it out all together, and you're doing the best that you can. So just continue to have grace for where you are for your situation. Man, it, it's just like I give you a big shout out to the moms later. I mean earlier, but you know dads too. You know, like if you're a dad and you're a single dad and you just take care of your boys too or girls. Uh, I'm, I'm, you guys doing amazing. You know, we all parents, especially in the situation 2020, we all doing an amazing job. You know, especially those that had kids 
through pandemic, right? Like, amazing. I don't know how I could, I, God knows, you know, everything. So, but like, I like what you know, just saying grace upon yourself, man. Like, you know, uh, take those kids or your kid as a ministry. They, they are like everything. Like, he, 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 I love when Vu uh, mentioned all the time, it's like, a, it's like a, it's leadership development. You have that responsibility. You have that privilege to do that, to speak life to these kids, speak life, mentor them, help them. I think that's what we need more. We need strong leaders to mentor our nation, to mentor us, you know, because like, I wish I could have my notebook right now, writing down what Nicole's saying, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going home and I'm going to apply this, you know, but it, it's, it's, it's been an a amazing time right here talking, but man, like, uh, don't compare your kids to other kids. They're unique. They're, they're, they, they're different and they're their selves. Like, don't, don't be hard on them. You know, that's what I try to do all the time with them. It's not because they're not learning fast or like they're not. It's phases, seasons. Listen to them. Like really pay your time to be intentional with them. Their time. Understand what their time is and just be focused and 100% with them right there in the moment. And I think like that's what uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll suggest and I'll, I'll tell the people. It's just like, man, just you're doing great, but just like they're, 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 they're your ministry, you know, and. Just put your, speak life to them. That's amazing, Diego. I'd love that. Um, I think I would also say, very similar to Janelle, would be take the pressure off, right? A lot of times there's a lot of pressure as a parent to be perfect, to do things the right way. And it's really having that self-compassion for ourselves and taking the moment to do that. And a quick tool to do that is one, just acknowledging that you're having a difficult time and really stating, I'm having a tough time right now. The second thing is to normalize it and everyone goes through this, right? Because we're not alone in our suffering, in our pain. And then the last thing is you put your hands over your heart and you say, and may I be kind to myself. You really take that time to have self-compassion with you because as the more self-compassion you have with yourself, the easier you're going to show and you're going to model for your children how to have self-compassion for themselves and then spread the compassion with their other colleagues, right? So that was, would be what I encourage parents. You're doing the best you can and we are so proud of you out there. So thank you so much for having us here. Really great, Nicole. It's beautiful. I think what you just shared right there, putting your hand over your heart and saying, may I be kind to myself. I think we should actually, we're here right now. We're tuning in on YouTube. And I think we should actually take a moment, all of us, to just place our hands over our hearts as parents and say right now, May I be kind to myself. I think that's so beautiful tonight to just declare that over ourselves, that we can be kind to ourselves, that yes, this year has been crazy, but we can take a moment and take the pressure off, like Nicole's saying, give ourselves grace, like Janelle's saying, not compare our kids to other kids, like Tiago's saying, just be kind, because as we're kind to ourselves, that gives us the grace to be kind to our kids, that we're not so hard on ourselves that, that it begins to cause even more stress and anxiety than if we weren't giving ourselves a break and we were nitpicky with every moment, because there's gonna be hard moments, whether it's 2020 or 2021, 2020, whatever year. <laughs> There are going to be hard moments as a parent, but there are also gonna be really beautiful moments. And so we've talked a lot about the hard moments, but we want you to know that you're doing a great job and you're creating beautiful moments in your home. Right now, we know that you guys are doing an incredible job of raising your kids. You're doing a great job. This conversation is not to make you feel like you're not doing a good job. This is just to continue giving you tools so that you know, okay, that's great. I, I like learning from other people. Janelle shared just a little bit ago about opening up conversation. It's just opening up conversation. I think for us as parents, we can hear what someone else is doing. That's what's so beautiful about community is hearing what someone else is doing and going, oh, wow, I've never thought about that. I've never thought about 
opening up a space in my home and giving my kids the freedom with art and encouraging my kids and taking a moment to just listen or creating education moments through being a bridge in conversations with race or creating conversations just in education and learning online and the world that we're living in. So many different tools shared tonight that have encouraged me as a mom. I have a young little daughter, but as she grows, I am going to remember these conversations and be able to apply them. And that's what's so beautiful about community is it's, it's not that any of us are better than any of you, not in any way. We're up here tonight saying we are broken as well and we're going through a tough year as well. But here's some tools that we've learned along the way. We hope that they encourage you. And we know that all of you tuning in tonight, that you could actually be up here tonight sharing tools that you've learned, maybe even better tools, but that could encourage us. And we're so grateful that you're tuning in and a part of this. And I hope that it has encouraged you tonight. That's the whole goal of VU Parent Live, of going live on these nights and just connecting with each other. We can't do it in person right now, but we're going to get to soon, hopefully. So we, we really want to take a moment to do it online and continue to refresh your spirit, to let you know that you're doing an incredible job, that you can have grace for yourself, that you can have grace for your kids, that your kids are incredible. They are incredible. We get the opportunity to be with so many of them and they are the future leaders. They are leading the way already. They're already the leaders of our church, leading the way in so many spaces. We get to see them doing that, whether it's online and in person, and it's so special to be a part of that. But Janelle was talking about day by day, and I love that because it really is, it's a day by day commitment. We're going day by day. This day looks different than yesterday, and this week looks different than last week, but it's day by day. And we talk about at VU, our vision last year was brick by brick, that brick by brick, we're gonna build this church. We're gonna build this house to give glory to God. But brick by brick and day by day, we're also building our family and raising our family. And so it's a day by day thing. It's not everything, you're not gonna figure out everything all in one day or all in one week or all in one month. It's a day by day thing as a parent to learn and grow. And as we learn and grow and have these conversations with each other, like Janelle's talking about having conversations, each and every day we're having conversations with our friends and our families that can encourage us and help us grow as we are parenting these world changers. And so tonight, I just wanna take a moment to say how grateful I am for you, VU parents, because you guys are incredible. You guys lead the way in so many different spaces. Many of you um, having jobs that you are working nine to five and then bringing your kids to VU and serving and many of you being homeschool teachers and many of you working and watching VU Kids Online, just finding a rhythm in so many different seasons and seeing how this year has changed you guys are unbelievable because I think about it as a new mom and I'm just so inspired by watching the way that you guys live, um, whether through social media or whether just through seeing you guys online on Zoom with your kids, the way that you love and serve them and open up the conversation of Jesus in your home really touches my heart and encourages me as a VU parent. Before we leave, I just wanted to read some scripture because that is what's most important here tonight is that we look to God's word for encouragement. We are broken people, like we said, and so we have tools and encouragement, but God's word is our ultimate guide and it will refresh our souls like nothing else so that we can continue to move forward. We've gotta to continue to fill ourselves up and be refreshed. And this week I was reading Psalm 91, um, just, few verses that I wanted to read over you, VU parents tonight. It says, the Lord, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a, life, a long life 
and give them my salvation. And I thought that verse was really beautiful as I was reading it this week. And I thought, we've got Voo Parent Live and we've got to share this verse just as a reminder that the Lord is with you, Voo Parent, that He's walking with you and that whenever you call on His name, He is there. So if we could share anything with you tonight, we want you to know that first step is to call on Jesus because as long as He's there walking with you, you have the grace, you're gonna have the wisdom, you're gonna have the strength to go through each day, day by day, to go through each day. And it might not feel like it in the moment. And like Nicole's saying, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to have all those emotions. When you walk with Jesus, He doesn't say that all of that's gonna go away. He says He's gonna walk with you. And as He walks with you, He's gonna give you His strength, His peace, and He is going to be with you through each moment. So just know that tonight, that if you're having a difficult moment, Jesus is not far. He's gonna be near and He's gonna walk with you. And I love that He says He will rescue and honor them. He's gonna rescue and honor you, whatever situation you are in. He gives you His salvation. So tonight, I hope that that refreshes your spirit, knowing what God's Word says, that He is with you, that He is walking with you, that He's honoring you, that He's rescuing you, that He's with you in times of trouble. Whatever you're facing, He is with you. And we're with you as a community. Janelle, Tiago, Nicole, myself, we are with you. And we are so grateful that we had this opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for taking time out of your night to be with us and to be a part of Voo Parent Live. We love that we got to talk with you tonight. And I'm so grateful for Nicole, Tiago, and Janelle. Come on, everybody tuning in tonight. I think we should give them a round of applause. Come on. We're so grateful for you guys. Thank you for being a part of tonight. It was so encouraging. Every word shared, every ounce of wisdom, I know it touched my spirit and know so many parents tuning in tonight and so many that are maybe not tuning in tonight, but they're going to be able to watch this back. So thank you guys so much. It's really special getting to be with you, VU parents. Thank you for all that you do in your home. You are raising incredible children, and we're so grateful that we get to partner with you and be a part. Your kids are amazing. They're leading the way already, and we just wanna say thank you for letting us be a part of the village that gets to raise them. We say, VU, that it takes a village to raise a child, and we're grateful to be a part of it. And Tiago is saying, it's not babysitting, it's leadership development. So whether you're tuning in online on Sundays with your kids or you're in person at Silver Spot or Jungle Island, it's leadership development. So tonight, we love you, VU parents. We want you to know you're the right parent for the job and that's gonna be a great weekend. We can't wait to see you on Sunday. We love you. Hey, Rich Wilkerson here. I want to say a big thank you for watching today's content, believing and trusting that it impacted you. And if it did help you or it encouraged in any way, I would love for you to like it and share it with some other people. Make sure to subscribe to the VU Church YouTube page where you can get more content just like this. And while you're there, go peruse the gallery, as they say, and see past talks and past content that I believe is going to help you. I love you. Best yet to come.